This is the third of three gra uh, videos on graphing inverse trig functions and their um, transformations and that sort of stuff. So on this one, they've given you, by they I mean me, ha ha ha, um, they've given you an inverse tangent function with a little bit of, of transformations happening, and then we have to graph it, state its domain and range, and we have to then graph the inverse, state the domain and range of that, and then come up with the equation. Okay, so, um, as I get started, I'm going to just real fast remember what tangent looks like. Tangent is 0, 0, and then it does something like this, and it approaches. This is the asymptote x equals pi over 2, and this is the asymptote x, asymptote x equals negative pi over 2. On here, sorry, I didn't draw the asymptote. It's doing something like this. Now, if you remember, tangent keeps doing that, but we restrict the domain from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 so that we can, um, its inverse will be a function. So the inverse of tangent looks, well here, this is now, x is and y is switched, so this is now y equals pi over 2, and down here I have y equals negative pi over 2, and then we're starting growing this way, and we grow that way, and there's our lovely graph. Okay, so then the, the 2 is be going to become a vertical stretch, so this instead of having an asymptote at pi over 2, it's now going to have an asymptote at pi, Instead of at negative pi over 2, it's going to be at negative pi. And then we are going to shift it up pi over 4. So, so what we're saying here is that, um, okay, let me draw this. Here is f of x. We now had, if this is negative pi, this would be negative pi over 2. Halfway through here is negative 3 pi over 4. Okay, if that's pi, here comes pi again. Okay, so what we had done is we had stretched everything with the 2. So now we would have an asymptote at pi and at negative pi, but now we're shifting it all up pi over 4. So the one that had been at pi now goes up to, oh, and I do need this pi over 4. It now goes up, we have an asymptote here, 5 pi over 4. We have an asymptote at negative, can you see? No, I'm sorry. At negative 3 pi over 4. And this that point where, the, where it changes, um, the inflection point where it changes concavity is right here. So we're doing something like this. Okay, that's the graph of f of x. Um, this was y equals 5 pi over 4, and y equals negative 3 pi over 4. And so when we go to graph the inverse of that, I have an asymptote. Instead of y equals 5 pi over 4, it becomes x. Let's do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 pi over 4. And then I need 1, 2, 3 pi over 4, negative 3 pi over 4. So then these asymptotes are here. And we now have the point, um, this is the point pi over, this is 0 pi over 4, so now I want pi over 4 is 0. And we're doing something like this. Okay. Oh, I forgot to tell you, domain and this one is all real. And the range went from negative 3 pi over 4 to 5 pi over 4, but it did not include those because those are asymptotes. Now we're looking at a range of negative 3 pi over 4 to 5 pi over 4 and a domain of all real. Okay, now if you... Uh, then the last thing that we want to do is we want to come up with that equation. So if I come back to the original equation and switch my x and y's, I would have x is equal to 2 inverse tangent of y plus pi over 4. So I'm going to subtract pi over 4. And then I'm going to divide by 2, or say 1 half x minus pi over 4. And now to undo the inverse, this is a y, and un to undo the inverse of tangent, I have to take the tangent of both sides, and so I get tangent of 1 half times x minus pi over 4 
is equal to y. Now this graph right here has a much larger range, or what am I doing here? Oh, you guys, it's been a rough morning. Um, this is the range, this is the domain. Okay, this one would technically have a larger, um, this graph here has a bigger domain than this because it has these pieces, um, it has infinitely many of them. Um, but this is like what I, um, what I talk about, if you remember, when we graphed things like find the inverse of this, the inverse of, of that is actually only this. This is where I talk about you can't grow an arm. Um, this may be y is equal to the square root of x, and this is a part of y equals x squared, but technically it doesn't have the other piece because this piece didn't exist in the original graph. Um, hopefully that makes sense, and if not, come see me and we'll talk through it.